Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a few days since we put out a video, and today we're going to be racing a thunderstorm to get one out. But if you hang around and talk to the break, we'll uh, get out here, we'll see what we can find for you guys to take a look at. Alright guys, like I said, today we're going to be racing the rain, so I'm going to jump up off of here. We've got to run around and take a look at some things we don't normally look at. I'll try to, I'll try to find the odd things that, that uh, we don't normally catch in our regular garden reviews, and then I'll show you the gardens too. But let's get to looking around, we'll see what we can find. Alright guys, we're still up here on the porch, and uh, we've come down through here, I've showed you these... Uh, cucumbers that are growing out of pots but as you know we grow them in hanging baskets too and I had somebody ask about them the other day but we had some trouble with the with the soil that we put in the hanging pots and we have had to dump them and rework them and uh, replant so they aren't up yet but if you'll take a look somebody had asked us how we do it this is one of the posts for the porch here and as we come down to each pot that string continues on across there and we tie it off to two of the rungs on the pot that way when the wind gets to swinging now the cucumbers will run down the string but when the wind gets to blowing the pots around up here on the porch the pots will swing with the string and that way the pots not moving independent of the string and tearing the cucumbers up out of the ground so we want the pot to move with the string since the string's going to have the have the cucumbers growing on it. So, like I said, we just anchor it off to two of the rungs on the pot, and then the little cucumbers can just come up, run down the string, and uh, the string won't tear, end up tearing out the little baby cucumber. So, we'll get out here in the garden, we'll take a look around. You can see the wind's picking up here on the old bumblebee flag. So, we'll try to get this done before this rain gets in here. Get ready to head around the house here to the garden and we have lots of stuff cut and laying around all over the yard let's see the june magnolia got a haircut Gina went out here whacking on the let's see the ostrich tree over there it got a bit of its lower leaves trimmed i believe this pile here came out of the bushes we need to get those trimmed up and stuff too but uh you know guys this is a not only is it a homestead but in between these videos and stuff we have to mow grass and uh, pull weeds and trim trees and stuff just like anybody else so um, I just thought I'd give you a little shot of uh, things in progress they aren't always as neat and stuff as you see put on the videos we do uh, actually have other work going on here too all right guys we're over here at the main garden and uh, to show you a kind of cute little scene here we've got our uh, pepper plants planted here and they're right along the edge of the ocean of beans there but uh, the poor little pepper plants are getting about run out you can see they're uh, they're starting to lean away from the beans and uh, trying to get their own sunlight so we're gonna have to come out here and probably have to push these beans back or kick them back into their row but uh, it's kind of a neat little scene the peppers trying to get away from the sea of beans all right, here's another one. We haven't really been able to walk in the garden here. Lately, I've just been uh, showing you from around the outside edges, but today we can walk through the middle of it. And I keep pointing these squash out to you guys. But uh, we're here, there's the South American corn, and there's the peanuts. So to give you an idea, that's the back of the garden. And these are the squash I keep telling you guys about. But we haven't been able to get out here and really look at them. So. They're all looking really good. They are all yellow summer squash. There's about three different kinds in there and I won't try to guess which one's which. But uh, gonna have a good crop of them. Let's see if I can get you a better shot. I'm right at the edge of the peanuts now. So I think about halfway up back to the back front of the garden. So good ha solid half row or so of, of nice squash. They should be producing soon. Let's see, there's eye level for me and I am six foot tall. So. The South American corn is pretty much all about my height, so it's doing really good. 
Scan down here and take a look at the peanuts. They are doing really good. Really happy with those. And uh, Tina and I will be breaking out the crocs here before too long. These cabbages are twisting up nice into some nice heads. We're real happy with them. So, let's see what else we can find out here. All right, guys, we're over here by the potato buckets and the, here you can see the sea of beans again and stuff. We're up here in the front corner of the garden. And uh, these were the volunteer squash plants. And we were pretty sure they were acorn squash. But last year, if any of you happen to remember, I uh, did a small video on uh, making a hill and planting pumpkins. And I'm pretty sure that the pumpkin seeds got away from us that year. I think they didn't, they didn't really come up in that hill or we didn't really even intend for them to come up. We were just making the video to show people how to plant them. But I believe these are coming up as pumpkins. Uh, I was pretty sure they were acorn squash. We had acorn squash planted in this area last year. But if you can see them there. I'm pretty sure those are brand new baby pumpkins. So, I was wrong. These are little pumpkin plants. We're going to have to throw a little extra fertilizer to them. But there's actually uh, three pretty good sized little pumpkins on there. And uh, we'll follow them along as they grow. All right, guys. We're over here at the raised bed garden now. And uh, just wanted to show you real quick. Um, we'll take a look in here, zoom in a little bit. But I wanted to show you that the little Roma tomatoes are starting to put on real good. And the little cherry tomatoes are starting to get tomatoes all over them. Now these are unstaked and we'll leave these to just kind of grow up and over each other. And they'll just kind of form a shrub. We'll get the tomatoes out of them as they come on. But there's a lot of tomatoes coming on these plants. Plants are still in pretty good shape. I don't see a whole lot of blight or anything. But I wanted to show you the little Roma tomatoes and stuff are coming on. And uh, we've got the peas out of here. I've got this planted up with aroma tomato plants too. There's 16 in that box. That box is 40 by 40. So they're planted about like square foot gardening. There's another 16 there. We'll roll across here. There's 16 over in that box. And you guys have already seen the ones growing over here in this one. But we got 48 new tomato plants in. Those are all Roma tomatoes. We want to have a lot of extra sauce this year. We'll roll down through here. I'll just show you real quick. The snacker onions are doing good. They're all coming on strong. About four inches tall now. But I wanted to get those globe onions out of here. The brassicas are getting about finished up in these two end ones here. So we'll be pulling what's left of them out of here before too long. And we'll replant these two beds. So things are in a constant state now of being harvested and being replaced. So we'll take you along and kind of show you what we're doing there. You know, these beets will come out for too long. We got the broccoli there that's underplanted with onions. That broccoli, will, it's going to be doing its thing here for a little bit here in the shade. But we're back to the, the new tomato plants over there. But I wanted to show you everything's looking real good. Here's some of the pepper plants hot peppers, some more of the bell pepper plants down through here, but we'll roll over here to buy the corn patch or something else I'm going to show you here real quick. All right guys, over here at the sweet corn patch, but what I really want to show you are the squash here. You can see down in there there's good yellow squash coming on on these. Got some yellow squash there. We'll kind of ease our way down through the rest of these, but there's a, some zephyrs. They're half yellow and half green. They're coming on real good. Got some uh, green zucchinis here. You can see they're putting on some nice ones down in there. There's one hanging out here. But if you'll notice, as we're walking down through here, you can see these squash and stuff laying up under these plants because there's no real need to leave those great big umbrella leaves on the squash plants. And if you look back up through there, you can see that we've gone through all the squash plants. And as we were weeding, we went ahead and took all those big umbrella leaves off the bottom of them. And that's one of the ways that we're able to grow so many squash plants in such a small area. 
as they're not overlapping each other, they don't need that many leaves. Um, popping the big leaves off of them just inspires the trunks to grow more. The more the trunks grow, the more blooms they'll put off. But just wanted to bring you down through here and show you that that's another trick if you're going to be tight planting, is you can take those big leaves off the bottoms of your squash plants. All right, guys, another thing while we're over here by the sweet corn patch, you can see the sweet corn there and this taller corn here. This is the hybrid corn project, but it's doing real well. It, right back here, guys, is the pond or the creek line. It goes on back through there and you can see how close the creek is to the back of the chicken houses here. He's over here so you can see the other one back here in the distance. But the creek is pretty close to the chicken houses, which is one of the reasons we don't free range our chickens. Plus they're uh, rare breed chickens that we don't want getting eat up by the hawks. So, But here's the creek line. Here is the corn. And here is the trap. And a lot of people have asked us what we do to keep critters out. And I will tell you that half a peanut butter sandwich in a box trap is almost irresistible to a raccoon. So after we catch them, we like to let them sit out here in the sun. Then we'll catch them at night. We'll let him sit out here the rest of the day. He'll sit in the sun and he'll get more and more agitated. And uh, he'll think more and more about the consequences of his actions. And uh, we come out here when he gets good and hot. We'll blast him with the hose until he gets kind of submissive. And then we'll pop that trap open and turn him loose. And uh, it isn't very often that we have coons come back for a second helping. So once we get them run out of here, and we've been working on it, but uh, once we get a few of them through the trap and stuff, they probably go on and tell their brothers and stuff, but then we don't have, uh, we don't have raccoons tearing down our corn. And uh, a lot of people wonder how we can grow corn this close to a creek line. But uh, we just like to let them get them overnight, let them sit for the day in the sun. They absolutely hate it, and it's probably not real good for them. But uh, then we blast them with the hose, and uh, they don't like that either. But uh, turning them loose tells them, you know, maybe it's the time they found somewhere better to play than my garden. So Tina's real good at trapping them, and uh, we run a trap over here by the corn. Way back here in the far end where you see the South American corn, these are our willow trees. I haven't told you all that much about some of the trees we planted. But as we get down there towards that other corn, where the woods is at that corner of the creek, Tina sets another trap down there. So it's uh, the two places where they tend to come onto the yard is to come check our chickens. They try to come up here and uh, bother them and they come bother the garden. So that's where we do most of our trapping. And uh, here in a few weeks, we'll have caught most of the coons in the area and uh, we'll see a real drop off in them coming to visit. Okay guys, here's another thing I wanted to bring you over and show you was uh, we kind of discussed the grapes were really coming on strong this year and uh, we're real happy to have them. These are the purple Concord grapes. we just kind of show you there, they are thick down through here. And we are getting ready to uh, start stretching bird netting over them. But we've got a couple birds nesting up in here. We want to let them go ahead and get their uh, their little fledglings out of the nest. They really aren't a they really aren't a problem with the grapes right now while they're green. So we'll let them go ahead and uh, they can finish raising their little ones, and we'll let them get them on out of here. If we're lucky, we may even see. Look real close there. There is a there is a mama robin. She is sitting on her nest right there. Trying to do her best to ignore me, but she knows I'm watching her and she's watching me. So but I hope you guys can see her up in there. But we're gonna go ahead and back out of here. We don't want her scaring her, or we don't want to scare the little ones up out of the nest. So we'll go on and uh, we'll let her raise those little ones, and then uh, we'll get some bird netting up over these. Another thing we need to do, while well, I work my way back up through here, is uh, we need to get the June bugs out of here. The June bugs and the Japanese beetles drive us crazy. So um, you can see the wind is blowing towards me and we just left the grapes. So behind me are the grapes. So the wind is blowing from here towards the grapes where the Japanese beetles like to screw us up. But as you can see climbing up the bag here, 
That is a Japanese beetle on his way to his doom. So <laughs> he'll fall down there in that bag. It'll take him a couple days to die. But uh, we got real lucky here. Caught us a caught us a Japanese beetle on his way to uh, learning his lesson in life. So we'll back out of here. There's a sweet potatoes. Got some strawberries and stuff going on up here. We're going to start cutting these runners off of these strawberries here for too long. We'll start potting those up so we can decide where we want to plant them after they get some roots. But we'll go on. See if we can capture Tina in the distance. Wave, Tina. <laughs> There's Tina over there. She's uh, hanging out these uh, Japanese beetle traps. So we'll get back over here, see what else we can find and take a look at. All right, guys, we're over here by the chicken tractor. We haven't done much too much up close on this one, but uh, we got one of our buff lace Brahmas over in here. He was getting to be a little bit of a pain in the butt, so uh, he is in timeout. But there's the box for the chicken tractor, and it will slide over here past the past the fig tree. It's uh, trying to make a comeback. Not the best fig tree in the world. I'll show you the wheel system and stuff on that one. We can crank those wheels down get it up off the ground and then I can move this whole contraption with the tractor and uh, the gentleman that built it for us thought it would be funny to cut a half moon in the door so uh, kind of got a lot of outhouse comments out of that but there's the end of the grape arbor over here by the pond we'll swing around there's the pond there's Tina's workshop over there some people have asked about that it's a uh, I believe it's a 12 by 20, something like that, not really sure. But we keep our mowers and stuff over there, and Tina's got some of her gardening tools and stuff that she uses over on this acre. But there's the pond down through there. The orchard's on back beyond that. We had some questions about the orchard, what we had, what kind of trees we had. We've got some uh, cherries in there. There's apples and pears. Let's see, big one right in front of me there is the peach tree. The tall ones over the top there are pears. They need cut back down. There's a couple of plum trees in there, but there's 30 trees to the orchard, and uh, we'll do a video on them one day, and we'll talk more about all of them. Right, there's our great big dappled willow. Let's see. That's a big pussy willow there. And that back there is a great big weeping willow that we planted. But all the stuff you see on the property here including the pond itself we put here there was nothing but a hay field in the house when we bought it eight years ago what nine years ago now but uh you see the pond's got some algae on it but it's got some little fish in there too we like having that when it floods the, out of the creek the flood water tends to come past the sweet potatoes there and it runs over here and runs downhill into the pond and then it goes back out the back corner of the pond so we collect little fish out of the creek one flood at a time all right, guys, we're over here beside the house. If you look past the fence, that's our front yard over there that you normally see. But, and back here is the part of the, part of our backyard that you normally see, over to the shop. But, I don't know that I've really shown too much about this part of the yard, which is the side acre going back up towards the road that's beside our front yard. But, we started some trees up in here. There's a lot of, maples and stuff we're coming by some berry bushes and stuff here that tina planted but this is kind of a little forest project here we've left a driveway down through there from the road there's a little clearing up the road and we can drive in here and drive back to the creek or we can drive around and go to tina's shop over here but got some new trees planted over here these uh fuzzy fruit trees up here in the corner those are uh nectarines i believe i'll have to ask her i believe those are nectarines and she's got some other little walnuts and stuff planted through here here's a big walnut and that walnut actually grew in a gutter and uh, my dad dug it out of the gutter stuck it in a pot and brought it over here and gave it to tina and tina stuck it in the ground and it is now you know probably about 10 foot tall but just thought i'd show you we got some other food forest projects going on over here and some maples and stuff but just fast growing trees we got a, about everything tina and i are just getting into our 50s and uh we don't have a lot of time for trees to grow so 
Let's see, we got some uh, almond trees over there, I believe. But our pecans, there's some pecans over there too. But we need stuff that grows fast, so we've tended to uh, plant stuff either either it grows fast or it's easy to propagate. So one or the other, but we'll get headed back over here. I'll be back in a minute to talk to you. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. We hope you enjoyed taking a look around at some of the things that uh, we don't normally show on the gardening tours. But uh, we appreciate you guys coming by the channel. We really appreciate the support and your watch time watching the videos. But if you would give us a thumbs up, we would really appreciate it. And if you have any questions or comments, I hope you'll leave those down below. And uh, we'll try to get to them. We're usually pretty good about getting to all our questions and comments. But if you like the content here on the channel, we hope you'll subscribe. There's a subscribe button down below. And next to it is a bell. If you'll ring that bell, that'll send you a notification whenever we release a new video. That's a great way to keep up with the channel. And uh, YouTube is really kind of knocking us down as far as notifying people when we put out new content. So please be sure to ring that bell. That's, a, that's important. So um, anyway, thank you for stopping by the channel. We hope you had a good time. We'll catch you in the next one.